Hello Mad Vapors, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Plume Veil, the EH Pro Plume Veil RDA. So let me show you what's going on in here before we get to the build. Um, from the outside it looks pretty standard, but it has a couple nifty things about it. First thing you'll notice when you take the cap off, is that much like the Helios, it has those two positive posts and two ground posts, so if you're doing a dual coil, you don't have to thread your wire, two wires through one hole, um, each lead gets its own terminal. It's Phillips head, not, um, what are those called? Allen keys. And then uh, you got your airflow, which is kind of unique. So up here you have your standard adjustable airflow. So you can pull this off. And you have two grooves here, and then one groove on this side. So if you're doing a single coil, you just turn it like that and open up one hole, and the other one will be blocked. If you're doing dual coils, you do it the other way. Have both holes open, and then you can turn it to adjust your airflow. I leave this one all the way open. Just like that. And you'll also notice that you have these other airflow holes here. So if you line these up, one of those up with this hole, it gives you a little bit of airflow from the back. So it's kind of hard to tell, but Where's my pointing device? Right in there is where it kind of tunnels through to. So your airflow comes through here and then through there and kind of hits the back of the coil. So you can block that off as well if you just want to line up the airflow with your coil and forget about it. You can turn it so that all those holes are closed. Or you can move it so that one of them, are, one of them is open and there's three holes there, so you can pretty much get it wherever you want, no matter where your coil is, for the most part. Up here, you can see there's this little black Delrin piece, and that's going to keep your drip tip cool. So since heat doesn't travel through plastic as well as it does through metal, it's insulated. And that is adjustable. So you'll also notice that up top here, you've got these airflow holes which supposedly create kind of a vacuum effect. Um, for me most of the time my lips end up covering that because the drip tip is too short. Not too short. It is short but it's not too short. I like the the short drip tips. It's also wide bore. Uh, this one will come with the plume veil. So it's really good for dripping. Lots of airflow. No juice backup or anything like that. But this Delvin piece can be adjusted by spinning it and that'll open up the airflow. But be careful that you don't do it too much. Depending on where your coils are, if this is too low, it'll actually start melting the plastic, and you can see that's what happened to me. There's little coil marks <laughs> melted into here. So for me, I just leave it all the way closed, or all the way up, however you want to think about it. Those two airflow holes really don't seem to do a whole lot, and I'd rather not have the plastic melt. So yeah, I just leave it all the way up. Both airflow slots open. And then I line one of these up with the appropriate hole there. And that's how I get my airflow. So that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. You got the deck. Um, it's got those four screws. It's got the airflow coming in from the side. And it's got a pretty deep drip well. It doesn't get in the way. And then up here you got your insulation to keep your drip tip cool, the wide bore drip tip. You put them together and you have an atomizer. So let's go ahead and build it. I'm going to build it on the Manhattan. Um, the Manhattan doesn't have a locking ring so there is no battery in it. But I'm going to build on it anyway. So here we go. These screws like to come out. I try to leave the screws still in there, but, you know, so the screws are still in, but these holes are still open. But you can take the screws out if you want. I don't want them to fall out, though, so I'm going to close them a little bit. Also, you got uh, the negative terminals built right into the wall of the atomizer. So it's not a separate post or anything like that. A little bit more durable. 
Today I'm going to be using 24 gauge, 6 wraps around a 2.4 millimeter screwdriver. I got a new screwdriver set, it's the same one, but now it actually has all the screwdrivers it's supposed to. Alright, hopefully that's enough wire. So this is my 2.4 millimeter. We're going to do six wraps. I'm going to get it into place first. Okay, I'm trying to do this without hitting the camera too much. One, two, three. Four, five, six. And like a lot of the three post strippers, you want both the leads pointing in the same direction. Scrunch it together and do coil number two. Yeah, that was a little too much wire. I thought it wouldn't be enough. didn't turn out quite as well. So let's pull the ends a little bit. There we go. And you got your coils, so time to install them. Just going to slide them right through the terminals here. So I'm going to lead, leave the leads a little bit longer than I usually do. Whoop, see, so Kenthal is magnetic. <laughs> and push it a little bit closer to the center. Why? I don't know. <laughs> On the plume veil, I guess I could help you with uh, lining up the airflow holes on the side. So I'm just going to push it a little bit now. Try to hold it there and tighten them down and then move it over some more. This would be a lot easier if you could actually see what I was doing. Snug but not too tight so that the wire breaks. Probably are going to have to go back afterwards and re-tighten them after you test fire it. That seems about good. Now I'll go push this over to the center a little bit more. Good enough. We'll make it prettier later. Let's put the second coil in. With the extremely long lead. Try to match it to the other side. That's about where I left it, so let's push it over a little bit now. Tighten them down, push it over a little more. Forgot to mention too, the plume veil will come with everything you need for your first build. It'll come with some 28 gauge canthal, um, some braided silica, screwdriver, all the usual stuff. Yeah, it looks like it's mostly in the same place. So I'm going to make sure these leads are tight. Trim them.
And that's about good. Got this new wire cutter thing. A little bit easier than uh, nail clippers or twisting them off. Except the canth all goes flying when you clip them. Oh, and that's also magnetic. <laughs> Alright, now I will throw a battery in, test fire it, move the coils around, squeeze the micro coils together, and then wick it. Okay. And as usual, this is going to be a little bit awkward on camera, but we'll give it a shot. Ah, missed it. Okay. Pulse it a little, squeeze it. Same thing on the other side. Pulse it a little, squeeze it. Much better. Okay, so now we're just going to move them closer to the center if we can. Squeeze it and pull it. That looks pretty good. Make sure they're on the same level. That one's a little bit low. So a good way to test. Do you want to move that one up or do you want to move the other one down? Which one lines up with the air hole? Actually, they all should be a little bit lower. And you can't see that. <laughs> so I just stuck the screwdriver back in and pushed it down a little. If your coils end up being on an angle, this is also the point where you could change that. Just take the screwdriver and move it, move it around a little. I'm just going to pull out to make sure the coils are tight. And push it down so they're both even with where the air holes will be. Yeah, it looks about right. Let's see if they heat up evenly. Nope. Gotta squeeze them again. Sometimes that happens when you move them around. <laughs> These, I also got a new multi-tool thing, but it doesn't like spring apart, so I kind of have to <laughs> stick my finger in there. It's a little bit awkward. Well, they look all right now. Well, extra squeeze never hurt anyone. Except for those people who died of getting squeezed too much. Okay, let's see what they look like now. Looking good. Alright, so I'm going to take the battery out again while I wick it. Just because I know I'm accidentally going to push down on this thing and it's going to fire. So I'm going to wick it with cotton. Already got this one unrolled. Uh, for a 2.4 millimeter, usually a little bit less than half the width of the sheet is about good. Roll the cotton up. That might be a little too much. We're going to find out. 
nope, it was good. Same thing on the other side. This one's going to be a little shorter, and that's okay. We're going to trim them down anyway. And there we have it. So let's cut these down to size. That should be about good enough. It depends how much wick you really want in there. It should probably be easier with scissors, but I don't feel like digging the scissors out right now, so I'm using the clippers. I'm just going to make them the same on both sides. This one's really fluffy. And that looks good enough to me. Take the handy dandy poking tool. So tuck that wick underneath. Come on now. There we go. Kind of keep it fluffy, don't try to pack it down too much. That's not really going to help you and it might even give you a cottony taste. And that looks about good. Throw some liquid on here. Test fire it. The initial dripping usually takes about 20-25 drops and then about 10-12 to 12 drops on refills. And then I'm just going to poke at it a little bit more so that the uh, there's not so many fuzzies. Get those fuzzies just stick to the rest of it. Now, you might be thinking that this thing will leak. You can kind of see when I push the cotton, there's some liquid that kind of moves in the hole. But I have not had it leak yet. For some reason it doesn't. Looks good. Let's throw the battery back in here. Nice. Heat up fast. Evenly. Equal vapor on both sides. Let's give it a test vape. Actually, before I do that, because it's the Manhattan, I'm going to adjust my pin. And get the top off. There we go. A 
I like the atomizer to fit flush. I don't care what they say. Cool. Where's the top? Here we go. Alright, so I'm just going to put it down and see where those other holes line up. And would you look at that? Without even trying, it lined up perfectly. So that's why I try to push the uh, coil a little bit closer to the center. So when I line up the air hole with the coil, it kind of just works out. But if you do need to play with it, just keep in mind that when you want to adjust this airflow, you turn the top cap. When you want to adjust that, you turn the whole thing. I guess this whole thing is the top cap. For this one, you adjust this, the top of the top cap. For this one, it's the entire top cap. So, let's uh, give it a whirl. Yep, it works. So, it's a... Uh, it's an RDA. <laughs> it's a standard three post or four post kind of build. Um, it's not nothing crazy like the Nucleus or anything like that. It's almost exactly like the Helios actually with a few more airflow options and this uh, top piece to keep it cool and additional airflow that creates a vacuum effect um, even though I don't really tell the difference. I'd rather have this all the way up just to make sure that it's not touching the coils and melting. But it is adjustable if that's what you want to do. So, that's it for the build. Pretty easy. Let's uh, zoom back out. Not back out. We were never out to begin with. <laughs> Let's zoom out, and I'll show you some vapor production. So, that's it. That's the plume veil. It's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward build, um, but it's, it's very easy. It's uh, one of the easier builds that I've uh, that I've done, or the easiest atomizer to build on that I've that I've used. Um, it's kind of like the Helios, except it's bigger, um, and I like the airflow a little bit better. Uh, I don't really know if those side things really make a huge difference. I mean, I'll show you. This is it with it open, and then I'm just going to turn it a little bit so that it's closed. Turn it the other way. There we go. Now they're closed. Still plenty of vapor. I mean, you, I can definitely tell that it's a little bit more airflow. The fact that it's coming from the back of the coil, I'm not sure if that makes a huge difference, but hey, it, uh, it works, and that's all that really matters. So the airflow on the top, um, like I said, I had it so low that it actually touched the coil and melted a little bit, um, but now it's all the way up, and that one I really can't tell a difference. But if you can, that's great. I mean, anything innovative like this to uh, try to increase your vapor production, I'm a fan of, so can't really complain. So, um, just if you're curious, I got the PV battery, the 30 amp, 1600 ma. Works really, really well. Okay, let's put some more liquid on here. It's not completely dry, but let's see how many drops. I can give you kind of a baseline how many drops it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so about ten to twelve drops, depending on how dry it is. Maybe a little bit more than that if you uh, built your coils a little bit higher and you can vape it a little bit drier without it tasting nasty. But I'm just going to go ahead and say anywhere from eight to fourteen drops. That's going to depend on a few things. It's going to depend on your build, how much wick you have in there, and. Uh, the dropper size of your bottle, if you have the big droppers, if you have the glass droppers, if you have the needle tip droppers, but in general, 8 to 14 drops will get it nice and juicy.
and uh, it's awesome. Um, I really like the drip tip that comes with it. If I'm using the plume veil, I'm actually using the drip tip that came with it, not the one I normally use because it's, uh, it's basically the same. It's the same width. Um, it's a little bit different on the inside, but the, the bottom hole, that part is a little bit bigger than our other wide board drip tips. It's the same size as the other one I got, and it kind of angles down on the inside there. Focus. Right, you can kind of see how it, it angles down a little bit. So uh, that helps the juice from kind of backing up and giving you that <laughs> sound when you when you pull through it. So I mean that's that's pretty much it. Um, the the one thing that is kind of weird to me, I guess, is that um, well two things and they're kind of related. It's these airflow holes up here, even if they're open, and the size of the drip tip make it so that you know, when you put it in your mouth, your lips are kind of covering those airflow holes anyway, and the fact that it it keeps the drip tip cool by having that Delrin is also kind of negated by the fact that your lips are touching the atomizer most of the time. But that being said, I've never burned myself on this atomizer. I've even chain vaped it, and yeah, it gets a, a little warm, but nothing even close to uncomfortable. Still, I would say that's cool. Almost lukewarm. So uh, now I can't say the same if you're using 18 gauge or 20 gauge or something crazy like that. This is 24 gauge. That's really as low as uh, I like to go um, in terms of Canthal. So uh, yeah, it's kind of nice that it has those features. If you don't like this trip tip and you use a bigger one, you will notice that it stays much cooler uh, because of the Delrin. And uh, just be careful not to screw it down too much where it, it melts <laughs> like I did. Um, it won't destroy the atomizer necessarily. I'm still using this one, but you don't want to be inhaling that, I'm sure. So just be aware of that. Uh, you can also adjust it from the top if it's in there well enough. You can just turn the drip tip to adjust it. Now, yeah, I can feel it right there. It touches the coil. So if I move it up to right about there, now those top two airflow holes should be open. Let's give it a shot. Vapor production seems the same. So, it is uh, kind of nifty. If you can tell the difference, that's great. Personally, I can't, and I'd like to avoid the risk of it melting, so I keep it closed. And that's about it. It's the plume veil. It's a four-poster, um, one lead per terminal. Um, no having to stack wires in there or uh, trying to do a sleeper build. If that's what you do. You can do all that if you want, but you don't need to. Um, really good airflow, adjustable airflow. Kind of a unique airflow system on the sides here that you can use or ignore at your leisure. And uh, it, it, like you just saw, plenty of vapor. So uh, let's chain vape it a little bit. I didn't test this one because my ohmmeter is broken and my multimeter only goes to one decimal point. But um, based on experience, this is about 0 0.2, 0 0.25, something like that. And actually, while I'm at it, I can show you two reasons why it could be called the plume veil. Here's the first reason. As you can see, there's a plume veil of vapor between me and you. Uh, the other thing too is if you're kind of walking or moving, <laughs> it kind of creates a plume veil around you. So, uh, yeah, it's the plume veil. I really like it. Um, it's up there with the still air and uh, the other... What was the other one? Yeah, just the other atomizer that I like. Um, the Hive. Um, it's kind of not... the. It's kind of comparing apples and oranges with the Hive. But um, if I'm using an 18650 atomizer nowadays, it's usually either the Tobe 2.5, the still air, or the plume veil. And... Uh, yeah, it, I, I really like it. So, that's it. It comes in stainless steel for now. We may or may not have some colors in the future. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, let's do a few more vapes. Let's vape it dry and then we'll call it a day. Yeah. 
and the big one. So that's it. Please subscribe. Somewhere up here you'll be notified when all the new videos come out. We don't do ads, so we're not making any ad revenue off you, so subscribing is purely an advantage for you, so you'll know when all the new videos come out. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike. This is Mad Vapes. Thanks for watching again. Seriously though, thank you for watching. <laughs>